the decomposition of copper 2 chloride, the electrolytic cell. Let's take a look at how electrolysis works in this case. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to Ms. Martins' classroom yet, subscribe now so you can become one of my official learners. Let's take a look at how this works. So first of all, we can prepare a solution of blue copper chloride or we can use molten copper chloride and set up the following electrolytic cell. It's an electrolytic cell. We've got one beaker. Both my electrodes, my metal plates, are in the same beaker. I've got a power source, a battery, and the battery is connected to each of the electrodes. Now, remember... My battery contains a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So here they say this is the positive and this is the negative. In the e electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. Anode positive, electrolytic cell. So this over here is my positive electrode. It is my anode. And over here, I've got my negative electrode, which is therefore my cathode. Now, before I get into this, I first want to speak about what is copper 2 chloride? Well, you should know the formula for copper 2 chloride is Cu. Cl2. The reason why is because they're telling me over here that the copper is copper 2 plus ions. That's what this 2 in the brackets tells me. So when I dissolve this in water or when I melt this molten copper chloride, it will produce the following copper 2 plus ions and Cl minus ions. Chlorine has a charge of negative one, the chloride ion. There's two of them because copper can give away two electrons. So there would be a big two over here. That's not relevant. What is relevant, what I want you to focus on, is I've got what we call my cations over here, my positive ions, my positive ions, cations, and I've got my anions over here. Now remember, with an electrolytic cell, the cations, the positive ions, they migrate or move towards the cathode. And the anions, the negative ions, anions like onions, onions make you cry, that's negative, that's sad. Anions move or migrate towards the anode. The reason why is because remember, the anode is the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So like we said, the anode is positive and the cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, the small terminal. So therefore the cathode is negative because cations are positive. So these little positive ones, that would be like the Cu2 pluses. All these positives are the Cu2 pluses. The, po uh, the positives are attracted to the negative electrode, opposites attract. So all these little positive ions are attracted to the negative cathode, opposites attract. And all the negative anions, which would be the Cl minus ions, those are attracted to the anode, which is positive, opposites attract. It is important to note in the cell that the electrodes themselves, so these metal pieces over here, the electrodes, are made up of an inert metal, inert. In the previous video, I told you that means that they are unreactive. They don't react. Generally, it's made up of carbon or graphite, carbon or graphite. Both electrodes are inert. They're both made up of carbon um, or graphite. Then electrolysis, this process here where the ions get attracted to the electrodes and now reduction and oxidation is going to occur. That's called electrolysis. And this will only take place when electricity is passed through this dilute solution, or in this case, it does say, I think it's dilute. Yeah, in this case, it's a dilute solution of copper 2 chloride. So this is the electrolyte, contains copper chloride. So the electrolyte contains the ionic um, substance, copper chloride, and that breaks up into the ions when I dissolve it in water or when I have molten copper chloride. And then the process starts. Now you might say, ma'am, what process? Well, remember the cations. So let's start. Let's start at the anode, actually. Let's start here at the anode, right here. Remember, the anions are attracted to the anode. As you can see over here, the negative ions are attracted to the positive anode. And then what process takes place at the anode? At the anode, we spoke about this in the previous video, anox. At the anode, oxidation occurs. So the oxidation half reaction will take place over here. Now, the substance that is being oxidized, remember oxidation is the loss of electrons. The substance that has been oxidized will be my Cl minus ions. Cl minus will lose electrons 
and it'll end up forming chlorine gas. And we are going to have to balance this. And you might say, oh, whoa, ma'am, hold up a second. How did you know that the half reaction is going to look like that? There's a lot of detail that goes behind why my half reaction looks like this. But to make life simpler for us, we can use our table 4B to help us figure out what our half reactions will look like. Otherwise, you can just memorize them. And you will know when you do the decomposition of copper 2 chloride, so when your electrolyte is CuCl2 and your electrolyte are carbon electrodes, you know that at the anode, oxidation occurs and the Cl minus ions, the anions, they are the ones that are going to be oxidized. But how do you use table 4B? Now, we scroll on our table and look for the half reaction where we see Cl minus because you know that our anions are Cl minus. I see it over here. And from the previous videos in this playlist, you should be aware of the following. If I have an oxidation half reaction, which we know we have because we are speaking about the anode and anode is oxidation. If I have an oxidation half reaction, I read the table from right to left. So what do I mean by that? I start on the right hand side and I write down whatever's on the right hand side to so 2Cl minus. Then I write my arrow, the arrow always points to the right. And then I write down everything you see on the left-hand side, Cl2 plus 2E minus. So just like that, I use my table to write down my oxidation half reaction. And as you can see, that's exactly what I wrote down over here. It also makes sense to write it down this way because oxidation is loss of electrons. And with the electrons being on this side of the equation, you can clearly see that this is losing these electrons and it forms Cl2 gas. Now what that means is that you will see little bubbles of gas forming here at the anode and that's the chlorine gas being released. So if you take a look at this first photo I showed you, I don't know if you can see the bubbles over here, that's the chlorine gas being released. So that's what happened at the anode. What is happening at the cathode? Well, immediately we know that at the cathode, that is where reduction takes place. Again, how do we know that? Red cat. At the cathode, cathode cat, reduction takes place. And you know that reduction is the gain of electrons. Now, because our copper 2 plus ions, our cat ions, our Cu2 plus ions, were attracted to our cathode, we know that it's going to be the Cu2 plus ions that are going to gain those electrons. And what's going to form? Copper 2 plus plus 2E minus, two electrons, that's actually going to form solid copper. And again, you could say, ma'am, how do you know that the half reaction is going to look like that? We can visit our table. So we started at the bottom and we read upwards. When we're doing um, electrolytic cell, the first reaction that you come across is the oxidation half reaction. Then we move up, 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 up until we get to our copper half reaction, which is actually this one over here. For those people that watched my galvanic video, you would have noticed that I said we use this one, the 0.34 copper, 99% of the time. So this is the one that I'm talking about. Also, if you watch my previous videos, you will know that the reduction half reactions, those that are reduced reduction half reactions, we read those from left to right. So you read it like you read a book, like normal. So how do I write it then? Well, everything on the left-hand side you write down first. So Cu2 plus, plus 2E minus. Then you do an arrow pointing to the right. And then we've got copper. So just to quickly recap, oxidation, we read from right to left. So in other words, you read it backwards. Reduction, we read from left to right, like normal. So you would write it exactly as I did over here. And you can see that reduction is the gain of electrons because the copper two plus ions are being reduced. They are gaining these electrons. So just be careful. If they ask you what is being oxidized or what substance is being oxidized, another way to phrase that is to say what substance is the reducing agent. It's just a different way to ask for the same thing. If you're oxidized, you are the reducing agent. You will say... Cl minus, because it's a Cl minus that is losing electrons. And if they say what substance is being reduced, otherwise known as the oxidizing agents, they want to know what substance is actually gaining the electrons. If you take a look here, it's the copper two plus, copper two plus that is gaining the electrons. Now, how do you write the net reaction? So what I've done here is I've just rewritten the half reactions. There's the oxidation half reaction. There is the reduction half reaction. 
make the arrows line up more or less so those are kind of in line then i've got two electrons here and two electrons here remember when you are doing the net reaction you look on either side of the arrow and if there's electrons and they are equal on both sides of the arrows like here i've got two there and here i've got two there on the left and right hand side of the arrows then you can cancel them so these electrons cancel what's left over is two cl minus on the left hand side and plus cu2 plus on the left hand side and on the right hand side i've got cl2 and i've got copper on the right hand side and that's the net reaction it's the ionic equation so they call this the ionic equation you can see that i am it's all in its ions okay and it's forming cl2 and copper now one thing that i forgot to mention let's go back quickly remember i said how we can see chlorine gas bubbles at the anode because if we go look at our half reaction the cl minus ions are oxidized and we form chlorine gas now what do we form at the cathode do you see that the copper two plus ions are being reduced they accept the electrons and they form cu copper this is a solid and that solid coats the cathode and what i'm saying now is super super important the cathode always gets coated so the cathode always gets coated or covered we always coat or cover the cathode and that's why in this picture the cathode is looking like a brownishy sort of color because copper solid copper is covering it in the next lesson, we'll be going over electroplating. And if you want to see any of the other types of electrolytic cells, just check out the playlist or the videos linked below. Bye, everybody.